Okay. Can you hear me? <laughs> hi YouTube. Say hi YouTube. Hi everyone. My name is Mackenzie. For those who don't know me, welcome. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. For those who do, hi guys. It's great to not really see you but talk to you. I'm finally filming a Q&A. It's finally happening. I've been putting it off for so long and I'm sorry it's taken this long, but I'm doing it. You guys send me DMs all the time asking me about all sorts of things. So I thought I would just make a Q&A video. I asked you guys on Instagram to send me some of your questions and there was an overwhelming response of some of the funniest, weirdest, awesomest, deepest questions. And so thank you guys so much for that. I tried to pick as many as I could. There were a lot of repeat questions, so I definitely picked the most frequently asked ones. So let's get started. One of the most frequently asked questions was, what was the process for auditioning and getting cast in Frozen? I had my first Frozen audition in October of 2019, and it was terrible. I had a really bad audition. I psyched myself out because when I was in the waiting room, I was seated next to two actresses that I knew and were like pretty well known and two women that I really look up to. So I freaked myself out, you know, questioning why I was in the same room as these women auditioning for the same part and had a bad audition. A couple weeks later, I actually was singing in a concert called Women of Broadway. I performed in that and Kristen Lopez, who actually wrote the music and lyrics to Frozen along with her husband, Bobby, she was at that concert and she saw me perform and contacted the Frozen gods and said, this girl should come in and read for Anna. And they said, she has, and it wasn't so great. And she said, nope, bring her back in. I want to see her. She would be great for this role. So thank God for Kristen Lopez. Thank you, Kristen. And Thank God I was singing at that concert in the first place because I wouldn't have gotten a second chance. So I went in for a second audition. Went okay, still wasn't my best, I thought, but then I was asked to come in for a callback uh, that next week and I went in not really sure what to expect, if it was gonna be like a lot of people there or just a few of us. And when I got there, it was me and five other women and halfway through the day, they cut three of us and we sang, we danced, we act and acted, acted. And then Sierra Renee actually came in and read with the last three Annas. And that's when I found out she was gonna be Elsa and I was like, gorge. But anyway, uh, yeah, so did that. And then at the end of the day, they said, okay, you guys are free to go. And I remember I called my mom and I was like, I think it was good. I think it went okay. And then I was about to go pick up my kid from school. Bitch, I'm a mother. Not my kid, I nannied. I do not have children. No drama! Right as I was about to walk out the door, I got the call and they let me know that I got the part and I'd be making my Broadway debut as Anna and Frozen on Broadway. And I cried and like fell to the ground and, and I didn't sleep for like two nights after that. It was insane. So yeah. Okay, moving on. Um, would you ever consider coming to London to do a show? Yes, absolutely. I would love to just come to London in general. I've never been. I have a ton of friends who've studied over there, some who have performed on the West End. Absolutely, 100% would love to do that. Uh, okay, ever going to make the jump to Hollywood? Hopefully, that would be ideal. <laughs> Most of my auditions right now are TV and film, like I'm sure a lot of other people's are right now because theater is obviously not happening. So yeah, I would love to be in TV and film and on Netflix. So anyway, next question. Uh, this was a frequently asked question. Can you talk about your college audition experience? So I think I, auditioned for maybe 20 schools, maybe a little bit less than that. And I did a lot of my auditions at New York Unifieds. The schools that were kind of my top choices or my reach schools, as some people, I've heard some people call them that, I made a point of traveling to the campus and auditioning on campus. So I did audition on campus at Michigan. And it's not something, I feel like people are always like, oh, if you wanna get in, you have to go audition on campus. That's that's not true, that's a myth. Um, but yeah, that was my experience. And there was another question someone asked me that, that said, did you not get into some schools? Were you rejected from any schools? Absolutely, I was rejected from a ton of schools and then luckily got into some. Okay, 
Next question. What goes into creating a Umish senior entrance? Who picks the songs, etc.? Love you. Uh, okay, so senior entrance is one of the coolest things ever, and if you haven't seen it or heard of it, I suggest you go on YouTube and look up University of Michigan Musical Theater senior entrances, and they'll all pop up, watch them all. It's a super collaborative process. It's completely student produced, so the seniors make it happen. They write it, they choreograph it, they direct it, they put it on my class, it was super collaborative, and uh, I remember we had teams, like there was a directing team, writing team, choreo team, and someone like came up with our shirts. Everyone who has like cute little nicknames on the back of their shirts and stuff. And uh, everyone kind of gets there the week before classes start and we put it all together within a week. Of course, the summer before we're always kind of like writing it and talking online about ideas we have and things that we want to make happen. But yeah, for those who don't know, it's basically just a giant medley of musical theater songs that are completely rewritten and we're welcoming the freshmen into the school, into the program. So go check it out. It's really fun. Any tips for UMish MT auditions or college auditions in general? It's my dream school. So I tell everyone, you will end up where you're supposed to end up. Don't put so much pressure on yourself like, oh my God, I have to get in this one program. I did that and I didn't end up getting into this program that I really wanted to get in, but then I went to Michigan and it turned out to be the best thing that has ever happened to me. So you will end up where you're supposed to end up. Also just be prepared. That's all you can really do. Like put in the work, do the prep work, be memorized, be professional, and then just walk in and be yourself. And I know that sounds so cliche, like be yourself, but they just want to see who you are. They're signing up for four years of you, not just the performer, but the person. So just be relaxed and show them what you have to offer. And that's literally all you can do. And don't freak out. I know that's easier said than done, but it's all going to work out, I promise. Um, okay. Oh, the phone's ringing. No one's answering it. Okay. Most embarrassing date story slash worst date. This isn't really embarrassing or it wasn't necessarily bad. It was just really awkward and weird that this happened. I was on a date with this guy who I had liked for a while and he finally asked me out and I was like, yes, let's go to dinner. So he took me to this cute little outdoor restaurant and funny thing was I was also kind of talking to someone else at the same time. We weren't exclusive though, so like don't judge me. It wasn't like that. The other person knew that I was not exclusive with him and I was dating. I was networking. I'm a businesswoman. So I went out on the date with this guy and while I was on the date, we're sitting outside having a great time. My view is the street outside of the restaurant and while we're eating and talking, I see this black car slowly drive by the restaurant with its window like down a crack and I realize that it's the car of the other guy that I'm talking to. He is doing a literal drive-by on my date. He doesn't have my location, my Snapchat location isn't on, so I don't know if he was just driving by by chance or if he followed me, I don't know, but he was there. And of course, you can only imagine how awkward that is. Poor, this poor other guy, I got so distracted. I was like, oh my God, but I was doing nothing wrong. Hello, but yeah, so I looked down at my phone and I have a text from this other guy saying, what are you up to? And I'm like, oh my God, this man is really testing me right now to see if I'm gonna lie. And so I fully just looked down and said, type nothing and looked up at him, made direct eye contact with him. And then he drove away and then I never spoke to either of them again. Sorry to both those men. How did you balance schoolwork and having a social life in college because I am struggling? Girl, I know that struggle. Definitely just setting boundaries with yourself I tried to at least, it's easier said than done, but you know, telling yourself you can't go to the club unless you get X, Y, and Z done on the weekend. I had an agenda, I don't even know if that's what it's called anymore, a planner or whatever, and I would literally check off the things that I had to do before I was allowed to like go to a party or something. You just gotta, you just gotta be on yourself and make sure you get your done. Okay. How do you remain staying true to yourself even after you've been hurt or heartbroken? 
I experienced my fair share of heartbreak in college, as I'm sure many of us have, but one thing I will say uh, that helped me stay true to myself and stay positive and working and kept my head on straight was my friends and having that group of friends that was always there and supported me no matter what and empowered me through everything the worst thing I could possibly go be going through and they would always be there to lend a helping hand also just giving myself time to like be sad and grieve but then saying okay time to like get moving again get working let's focus on other things let's do it and that's also I think just like setting those boundaries for yourself which is easier said than done that's my mom's favorite thing to say to me has been for years hi mom give us the scoop on your boy so his name is Michael and we actually went to high school together and I had a crush on him in high school but don't tell him I said that it's whatever um, and then we were also actually in New York City at the same time he was working and I was doing Frozen and we had a bunch of mutual friends there but our paths never crossed while we were there and then obviously the world ended and we both ended up coming home and then ended up reconnecting kind of end of the summer and uh, yeah I made him go on a date with me so it worked out and now he's my boyfriend what are some of your best and worst audition experiences? So I have a perfect story for this question. I was actually in callbacks for Regina George in Mean Girls on Broadway. First it was for the tour and then it was for the Broadway company. And I remember I went to my audition feeling very good, very confident. Um, I was really excited about it. And I get in the room and there's only two other girls there. And I'm like, yes because sometimes a big busy room with a lot of people always makes me feel really icky and nervous and weird and so it was really chill vibes all was well I'm sitting there waiting to go in and the girl gets up to go right before me and she's like tall got the blonde hair she's wearing this fierce pink blazer and I'm like yes she walks into her audition and the audition room was right next to the waiting room and y'all know if you've been in there you can hear everything that goes on a lot of the time and especially with these girls singing world burn or someone gets hurt like the 16 bars of like the beltiest part of the song you can hear everything so this girl walks in i'm sitting in there with i'm sitting in the waiting room with one other girl and we hear her start to sing and i'm not even kidding i literally almost stood up and walked out of the room i was like should i just go home like she was incredible it was insane and I literally remember this other girl and I look at each other and we're like, oh, okay, okay, great, cool, great. And this girl walks out, gets her little water bottle, gets her bag, it's like, break a leg. And I'm like, thanks. Uh, it was funny. And imagine having to go in and sing after Renee Rapp, sing the part of Regina George after Renee rap and she doesn't know the story i've never told her this story so hi renee you're a queen and <laughs> she killed it you guys she sounded so good and i just remember sitting out there being like okay i was laughing like i wasn't even upset i walked in feeling i actually had a good audition i felt so chill because i was just like there's no way i'm gonna get this part she was a freaking queen and lo and behold now she's playing it on broadway and she's a star so that was definitely a very unique, funny audition experience. <laughs> Who or what were your inspirations to pursue musical theater? This is the most cliche answer of all time, but I saw Wicked when I was, I don't even know how old I was, but it was the first Broadway show I remember seeing. I saw Beauty and the Beast, I think when I was like five, but I saw Wicked and it changed my life. I was like, strap me into the lift put me in, put me in the cape, let's go. I fell in love with it and I was like, okay, yeah, this is what I wanna do, I wanna do this. So yeah, those are some questions that you guys asked and I'm sorry that I couldn't get to all of them but I tried to pick the ones that were showing up most often. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe and follow me on Instagram. I'll put all that info below. 
and I'm really excited because I want to make more videos. I have a lot of fun doing it. And one question that was asked frequently that I didn't get to was about my makeup routine. So you guys seem to be very interested in that. So I'm planning on doing a makeup tutorial. Woo! Um, I'm not a makeup artist, as you will soon find out, I'm sure. Uh, so don't judge me at all. Please don't laugh at me. You're probably going to be a little bit shocked to see, to see what I do. Um, so comment and tell me if you guys would rather see maybe like an everyday kind of makeup look or one that I do if I'm going out or something. I'll do whatever. I don't care. It'll be fun. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I had so much fun. And if I didn't get to any of your questions, feel free to DM me or comment and I'll try to answer any and all questions you have. So thanks. Bye guys.